So, have you ever wondered what kind of information is being sent back and forth between your computer and the internet? What applications are reaching out and what data is being sent? Perhaps you're connecting to things you're unaware of. Maybe you're even hacked and your computer is connecting to attackers. The way to answer all of these questions is going to be using a tool called Wireshark, which gives you an inside view of what's happening on your network. Of course, if you're not used to looking at packets, this is going to look very intimidating, but I'm gonna make it really simple. So let's start at the beginning. So when you open this application for the first time after install, it's going to show you a list of all the different network interfaces that are on your computer and ask you which one you want to capture. As you can see here, we have two options where we have a little graph here that shows you something is happening, some kind of movement is taking place. This is the ethernet, so it's the ethernet port on my computer through which I'm currently connected to the internet. But if you're connected via Wi-Fi, make sure you select that instead. Now, once this is open, as you can see, our window is being flooded with a lot of information. And that is because this is how the computer works nowadays. We constantly are sending information back and forth from our computer to the network. A lot of it is background applications, but it's really difficult to make sense of this. So if I go ahead and open up my browser, and let's say we just do a simple Google search. Let's just do a Google search for Wireshark. Now, as we're doing that, if we go over to Wireshark, you can see that we have a ton of stuff. And among that, we can see some websites that appear linked to Google. And we can click on pretty much any of these things to see the information that we're sending. And I know what you're thinking. Leo, this is not English, this is gibberish. And that's what you would normally find if you looked at a random packet. A packet is kind of like a package you get from Amazon. It's a bunch of data grouped together to be sent over the internet. And if we see on the left, we can see the description of it. So we've got 1292 bytes. Bytes are a unit of data and just like grams for weight, but there are different ways in which information can be sent and that is going to be defined by the protocol. So for example, DNS means domain name system. So this is information that is being sent out to get the address of a computer or a server to communicate with based on a name. So let's say you want to reach Google. So your computer says, I want to reach Google. Where can I find it? The domain name system basically gives it the address of the computer closest to you where Google is serving data. And that little bit of information is going to be super useful to us in simplifying this view. Because right now we're seeing all the different protocols through which communication is happening. So for example, if we take a look at TLS v1.2, which means the information is jumbled up for security. And that is why it looks like gibberish, just like what you would see in a file encrypted by ransomware. But if we go ahead and select the search filter and type in DNS, boom. Now it makes a lot more sense, at least the top bit, because you can start to read the names of different websites. So we have google.com, we have msn.com, and the various subdomains that come with it. We even have gamepass.com. We have Windows Update. And I'm sure this is now starting to make sense. And on the left, we can see the source address and the destination address, which is kind of like a street address or like your postcode, but on the internet. But most importantly, simply reading the domain name here, like gamepass.com can tell you that your computer made a request to connect to a GamePass server. Similarly, I can see Windows trying to sneakily download updates in the background. It loves doing that, especially when I'm low on battery. And in order to demonstrate that this works, we can simply go ahead and open a website. So let's say we go to the pcsecuritychannel.com. So if we go ahead and visit my very own website, you're going to see the Wireshark, it is going to pop up as a new request. So over here, you can see the pcsecuritychannel.com referenced various times. But the interesting thing is you're also going to see references to other websites like youtube.com, even though we never really visited YouTube. And this is where it gets interesting. So the reason you're seeing youtube.com being loaded, even though we never visited it, is because if we take a look at this website, in the background, you have YouTube videos. So I do have YouTube videos linked. In order to get these thumbnails and the information about these videos so you can see them, your computer also automatically has to connect to youtube.com. So let's say a website was trying to track you 
or connect you to a third-party ad website, guess what? You would see requests to that advertising website right here. So for example, let's say we go to CNN.com. I know it's cringe, I'm sorry. As you can see, we do get www.cnn.com, but along with that, there is a long list of websites and subdomains. So media.cnn.com, also youtube.com because they have YouTube videos, cookielaw.org, jsdeliver.net, turner.com, medium.ngtv.io, bitmovin.com, warnermediacdn.com. So you can already tell how this tool is super useful in understanding what's actually behind a website. Similarly, if we go to cnet.com and open up Wireshark, as you can see, we are getting queries to adtech.redventures Io. So this is probably a third-party advertising company that is embedded within this website. So I think you're starting to see the investigative power of this tool, even if you're simply looking into DNS requests and nothing else. Now, what if you wanted to know what's happening in your computer in the background? Well, all you have to do is just keep it running and observe the traffic coming in. So if I do a control F and look for specific strings, for example, let's say I look for Discord. As you can see, we are reaching out to discord.com and that's because I have Discord running. So in the background, it's gonna be communicating. Similarly, if we try Microsoft, you're going to see a ton of hits for Microsoft exchanging data in the background. If you have Spotify running, it's gonna show Spotify. And I'm only doing a search to speed this up, but what's going to happen is as those communications are taking place, it is going to pop up at the bottom. So this is again, a good way to know what kind of communications your computer is doing, what sites are you connecting to, what applications you might have running in the background, even if they're not visible necessarily within Windows. Cause a lot of time an application may be running as a service in which case you're not going to see it on your computer or even see it in task manager, but it might still be connecting to websites in the background. So I hope this helps you get started with your investigating journey with Wireshark. You can try it right now and see what kind of connections your computer is making. And the best part is you can do this regardless of whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux. Would love to hear in the comments if you found anything on your computer that surprised you. Now, I've obviously been using this tool a lot in my past videos, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial so everybody has these basic skills and can understand what I'm talking about when I'm using it. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this. By the way, a big thank you to Malwarebytes for sponsoring this video and some of our other educational videos recently to showcase their newest version of Malwarebytes Premium. As you can see, they have a very slick looking dark mode, very easy to use, user interface. Many of you may know them as the legendary second opinion scanner, but now of course they have real-time protection along with ransomware protection and exploit mitigation stuff. Personally, I really like the fact that they have an option to block pen testing attacks. I always turn this on in case somebody's trying to connect to a command and control server. It's gonna block stuff like that. Now, it also gives you the option of having an integrated VPN. So if you're wondering, well, if I can see all those websites in Wireshark, anyone with control of the Wi-Fi network can. And that is where this comes in handy. So if you turn on your VPN, all of that information will now be hidden, making your browsing activity invisible to your ISP. And once again, this is a full featured security solution. It replaces Windows Defender and you can check it out right now by going to the link in description, getting a free trial, you'll have access to exactly this. Of course, we've done independent tests of Malwarebytes in the past. So feel free to look that up on our YouTube channel and we will be testing this more in the future. But for now, just wanted to thank them for for sponsoring our educational content and showing they appreciate the cybersecurity awareness that we bring. So do check them out using link in description. Thank you all so much for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're super close to 500,000 subscribers. So let's get there. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.